In today's video, I am going to be showing you kind of a secret that I tell every single one of my players, if you're close to dunking, what you need to do so that you can dunk extremely soon. And that is, of course, getting up to a 10 foot rim. This is currently 10 feet. I'm six foot two, I'm reaching up, I can barely touch the mesh. It's 100% 10 feet, it says so on the back and it says so by me knowing exactly where the mesh should be. So that is a 10 foot net. I'm 250 pounds, six foot two. I shouldn't be able to touch the rim, but I can. However, to dunk the ball, to dunk a basketball, you need to get the, the rim at least to about to your wrist to get a clean dunk. Technically, you do need to get a little bit more because of course, when you're dunking, you don't wanna be dunking right at the top of your jump. You wanna be either on the way back down or if you're really unlucky on the way back up or on the way up, but technically you should be dunking on the way down, which means that you need to get a lot more than just your wrist. You need to get at least an inch or two further down your wrist to be able to dunk. Right now, when I go up to try and touch the rim, I can touch the rim. I can do that quite easily. I get the rim about halfway up my hand. However, if I want to be able to dunk, I need to have a lot more than that. And what is dunking really? To be able to jump higher, you need to practice jumping. Of course, here in a small location in, in a driveway, you're not going to be able to get a massive, massive running start. I'm a one leg jumper. I need to be able to go up off of one leg to be able to touch the rim consistently two, two feet. I'm kind of not very consistent, but at least if you've got a driveway or if you can actually get to a park and do this as well, then what you can do is to practice your footwork and to just practice your jumping. For example, I tell every single one of my players, as soon as you can barely touch the rim to get a tennis ball and to take this tennis ball everywhere you go, whether you go on a vacation or if you just randomly show up on a court. What you want to do every single time you're on the court is to do at least 10 dunks with the tennis ball. So go, if you're a two foot jumper, do 10 with two feet. And if you can't get up there with one foot yet, then at that point, you would want to still try to do rim touches with one foot, but you should be able to go off of both feet and one foot if you want to be a really good dunker and if you want to be a really good player. So for me, I would come up here every single day now, I will, to this rim, and I'm going to do two, or sorry, 10 two foot jumps and 10 one foot jumps. And what we'll do is just one, two, three, and then get up there and do a quick dunk. You don't really want to have this ball go off the backboard as I did there. You want to be able to cup it in to be able to get that ball into the rim like a regular dunk. You don't want to have this ball going way off the backboard because at that point, the same thing is going to happen when you go to a basketball, when you get high enough to get to a basketball. If you can, you can go one, two and up, or if you need a little bit more power like myself, you can take three or four steps to get up there. And that's exactly how you would want it to look, the ball going straight into the rim. And then you want to do the exact same thing with one foot. If you can't do one foot, always, you don't have to use a tennis ball. If you can get up there with two feet to dunk a tennis ball, then at that point you'd be set, but go with one foot. If you can't do with one foot yet, practice the rim touches first and then build your way up. But you really want to work on your footwork. You don't want to be stutter stepping up and then going up with one foot. You want to take nice long strides for me, one, two, and then I can get up there and dunk. Now, once you graduate from a tennis ball, if this get becomes super, super easy, go to a larger ball, maybe a baseball. It's a little bit bigger. And then you can continue to graduate to bigger and bigger balls. You can eventually graduate to like a, a dodgeball, and then you can graduate to a soccer ball and then to a basketball and you can keep on going. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe. Make sure to go check out my hardest basketball shooting workout down in the description below, and I'll see you guys again next time.